How many hair follicles do we have? What determines the texture of our hair? When does hair greying start? Is hair simply dead matter? There are so many questions that come when it comes to the matter of hair and there is so much advice out there. But how do you know what's right for your hair? Like always, knowing the basics and setting the foundation is key. This will let you know your hair and scalp better so that you can make an informed and wise decision to enjoy the benefits. In this video, we are going to cover what function does the hair serve? What are the different types of hair? What is the structure of the hair? And how do procedures like blow drying, coloring and other hair procedures actually affect it? Then we'll also discuss the hair growth cycle and this will answer so many questions that I get almost on a daily basis with regards to our hair growth and hair fall. And finally, we'll discuss what determines the texture of the hair. To all you lovely people who are part of the Dr. Doctor family, hi! And if you're new to the channel, welcome! I'm Dr. Sanova Doctor, fondly called as Mrs. Dr. Doctor. I'm a board certified dermatologist practicing integrative and holistic dermatology on this channel we discuss skincare holistic health and everything relating to lead a healthy and happy life since understanding the hair and scalp is one of the first steps to achieving your hair go hair care goals I decided to create this series of hair care and everything related to it so that you can make a well-informed decision for yourself if you haven't subscribed already please click the link below so that you can get notified every time a new video gets released. So without any further ado, let's begin. Now the field of trichology that is when it comes to matters of hair and hair care has been my forte right from the time I entered the field of dermatology itself. During my training years, I was fortunate to be a part of an amazing department and we had one of the busiest hair OPDs in the country. I am a hair transplant surgeon and even conducted a path-breaking research where we actually transplanted hair into scar tissue. Now there are many scalp conditions that cause these things and this was very useful when medical management failed to regrow the hair for these people so when i say that understanding your hair and scalp will really do good in the long run you can trust me first let's understand what function does the hair serve now many researchers argue that the human hair is part of the is, is a vestigial evolutionary remnant that simply means that during our evolution, this part of the body was just left behind having no function of its own. But that is not actually true. The human hair actually serves many physiological and psychological functions. The hair present on our scalp and the rest of the body serves in thermoregulation and protection. Our hair is actually sensitive to the movement of the air and the environmental disturbances that are present around. For example, if we feel cold, or if the body perceives a potential dangerous threat present out there, our hair actually stands up and traps a layer of air to add that insulation that is required during that time. And this is what gives the appearance of goosebumps. We know in animals, hair helps maintain temperature. It helps to retain heat, prevent the body from getting very cold. It also helps in camouflage, and it also serves as a sexual attractant. In addition to all these, the hair serves a very important protective feature, like it protects the scalp against the sun. It defends our nose and ear by trapping dust particles that might contain potential harmful allergens and pathogens. In addition, humans have specialized hair like our eyelashes, eyebrows, and these really help in establishing self-identity and self-evaluation. Before we delve into the anatomy of the hair, I want you to understand the different types of hair that are present. And there are two main types of hair present over our body. First is the villous hair and the second is terminal hair. 
villus hair are nothing but the short fine light hair that you see over your body now these villus hair will be present all over your body you will see these light fine hair present everywhere they are just not present over the palms and soles and over the lips now the main purpose of the villus hair is to protect the skin and to keep the body warm but the the thickness color and length of the villus hair might vary a little on an individual basis like my villus hair might slightly differ from the villus hair that is present on your body and the second type of hair that we all actually know of is called as terminal hair now terminal hair are thicker longer and more pigmented like the hair present on our scalp when a baby is born terminal hair is present only over the scalp the eyebrows and the eyelashes and the rest of the body is covered with villus hair but under the influence of androgens during puberty these villus hair get converted to terminal hair for example the hair the beard hair the hair present in our underarms axilla the genitals the trunk these are examples of when villus hair gets converted to terminal hair so i hope now you know the difference between the two types of hair that are present on our body we have the terminal hair which we all actually know of and the short fine light hair that we see over the rest of the body they are villus hair now the reason why i wanted you wanted you to know the two types of hair is because when you go for procedures like laser hair reduction it is going to act on a particular type of hair and this will help you understand what is actually happening and what to expect out of that procedure now let's understand the structure of the hair for easy understanding i want you to consider that the hair contains two parts one is the hair follicle which is the seed which gives rise to the hair and the other is the hair shaft that is the part of the hair that is visible above the scalp the hair follicle is present just below the surface of the scalp skin this is the life component of the hair and it contains germ cells which actually reproduces the hair again and again in spite of it falling out now a single hair follicle can give rise to either a single hair strand or it can even produce a group or a bunch of two to four hair shafts hair strands coming out from a single follicle and this is known as a follicular unit Now you will hear the term follicular unit very commonly if you are considering hair transplantation. So this is just something to keep in mind as well. Now remember, I told you the hair follicle is live. It is the seed which is giving rise to the entire hair. So it has a lot of connections present within the scalp, and one important connection is with the sebaceous gland. This means it is going to produce sebum. Now this is the body's natural way of moisturizing and taking care of the hair. So this sebum that mixes with the sweat it forms a protective layer on the scalp. And when we actually comb our hair, we are distributing the sebum throughout the length of the hair shaft, and this is going to moisturize and keep the cuticle intact. Now I'm going to discuss what the cuticle is in just a moment, but this is a very important point that I want you to remember as well. So this is the reason why we actually find our scalp getting oily and greasy within a few days, and we need to regularly wash it off. but we do not have to overdo it because this is something that is normal and naturally occurring and our body's protective mechanism to take care of the scalp and the hair the hair follicle also has a very rich blood supply network connection within the scalp and this is why nourishing the scalp is actually very important for good hair health now let's understand what is the hair shaft it is the part of the hair that exits the scalp skin and it is the part of the hair that we can actually see comb and style the hair shaft is made up of three concentric layers we have the outermost cuticle we have the middle layer that is known as the cortex and we have the innermost layer known as the medulla now the medulla which is the innermost layer of the hair shaft is not having a particular function in humans as such in animals it helps in maintaining the body temperature and it may or may not be even present in all the hair strands that we have present on our body but the other two layers of the hair shaft are actually very important so first let's discuss about the cortex the cortex is forming the middle layer of the hair shaft it is the cortex that is made up of keratin 
keratin is nothing but the protein that our skin, hair and nails is made up of, right? So this keratin is very important because it is what it is responsible for giving the durability, elasticity and strength to our hair. Now the cortex layer also contains melanin and melanin is the pigment which is responsible for giving our hair color. The color of your hair will actually depend upon the type of melanin granules, the amount that are present and its distribution in this layer of cortex. And the outermost layer of the hair shaft is called as the cuticle. Now this cuticle is made up of dead cells. This basically means the cells that grew and lived and divided. By the time they reach the outermost layer of the hair shaft, they have lived their life and they die and then they're ready to simply fall off. And this is very similar to our skin cycle. Like our skin is made up of multiple layers. So the skin cell is born and the lowermost layer and then it multiplies, divides, matures and finally it reaches the top is when it becomes old and dies and then falls off. And this is why we say exfoliate and remove those dead skin cells. Now the only difference is when it comes to the cuticle, these dead cells are actually forming a protective layer to protect the hair and it is going to stay intact. But the cuticle can be damaged by the use of excessive heat like using a straightening iron or with chemicals that are used while colouring or even the harsh sun, harsh brushing, uh, wind. All these things can damage the cuticle as well. So while our genes determine the type of hair that we are born with, a lot of external and internal factors together will determine how our hair will finally appear and look. So I hope you understood the different parts of the hair. We have the hair follicle that is the seed, which is the life component present within the scalp. We can't see it, but that is what is causing the entire hair shaft to grow. The hair shaft is nothing but this that we can see which has come out of the scalp which has those three layers. The medulla is something that is not very important but outside is the cortex which is giving that strength. It is it has all those protein layers that I showed you and the outermost layer is the cuticle which is actually forming that protective layer for the entire hair shaft. Now, now I like to compare our hair uh, as if we are planting a seed or a crop especially since I do a lot of hair transplants. It is very beautiful and satisfying to see the way our hair grows because we are literally implanting the hair follicle that is the seed within the scalp and then we see the hair grow, fall off and again regrow from the same follicle. The difference over here is that we are all born and blessed with these hair follicles at birth. We have to take care of them by nourishing and providing a nice environment for it to grow and thrive and hence that strength, the appearance and all these other things will automatically come into place if a hair follicle is strong and is able to produce good length and thickness of our hair. Now let's discuss the hair growth cycle. Now the rate at which the hair grows will differ from person to person but on an average our hair grows by 15 centimeters that is roughly 6 inches every year. All types of hair that is including the scalp and body hair go through three stages of growth. There is something known as anagen, catagen and telogen. All I want you to remember is what happens in each of these phases. Now anagen is the growth phase. Normal scalp hair stay roughly for two to six years in the anagen phase and it is the anagen phase that will determine the length of your hair. This means your hair will continue to grow as long as it will stay in the anagen phase that is the growing phase. But keep in mind the anagen phase for our eyebrows, eyelashes, um, legs, leg and arm hair they are short, it's roughly only around 30 to 45 days and that is why these hair are shorter as compared to a scalp hair. This is actually a good thing because we do not want really long hair here, right? After the hair completes its growth phase, that is the anagen phase, it will enter the stage of catagen. This is the stage known as the regression phase where the rate of growth will slow down the hair follicle will shrink and shrivel and will actually begin or get ready to detach from the hair shaft. 
This will take around 2 to 3 weeks and approximately 3% of your hair will be in the catagen phase at this time. And the last is the telogen phase. This is the resting stage for your hair. Approximately 10 to 15% of our hair are in the telogen phase at a time and this phase will last for 3 months. This is actually a kind of uh, phase before the hair act before the hair shaft actually falls off now why have a resting stage before you have to fall and die this is something that i had questioned in the beginning when i learned about it but what is the beauty is this is giving that hair follicle time to produce and regenerate and re-energize to produce a new hair follicle. So the one that is now going to grow is going to push out the old one that is going to fall off. This cycle will continue to go on. So the hair follicle will produce hair that will continue to grow as long as it's in the anagen phase. Once it reaches its limit, it will enter the catagen phase where it will regress and then it will undergo the telogen phase where it will rest and allow the hair follicle to again prepare a new hair strand or multiple hair strands from the same follicle that will then slowly push out that old hair which will fall off. This is why every time you all come to me and ask that you all are losing hair, my first question is how much? This is important because losing hair is normal. This is part of the hair cycle. Now we've understood it, right? But how much are we losing is what is important. Losing 80 to 100 hair per day is absolutely normal. But if you're losing more than that, then we need to evaluate and consider what is the cause and what is actually happening there. Now let's understand what determines the texture of our hair. Whether your hair will be straight, curly, wavy, or a mixture of all of these, will depend upon the structure of the cortex and the medulla if it is present. I also want you to know the difference between hair type and hair texture. Hair type refers to the shape of your hair. So your hair can be straight, curly, kinky, wavy. This is what we refer to your hair type or the shape of your hair. Whereas hair texture refers to the thickness of the hair and not how the hair feels. There are three basic types of hair textures, fine, medium and thick or coarse. A very simple way to determine your hair texture is by comparing it to a piece of sewing thread. Thick or coarse hair is usually the same thickness as the sewing thread. The reason why I wanted you to know these terms is because when you go to a dermatologist or when we will discuss certain products and procedures and emphasize on what is acting on giving you a particular hair type or hair not hair type but hair texture this is what I'll be referring to for example my hair type is straight but my hair texture is fine now I told you that we can have multiple hair types or shapes of hair on the same body on in the same person like my the front of my hair is a little wavy and kinky and then it becomes straight so this is absolutely normal. I know a lot of people have wavy and curly hair near the nape of their neck at the back of their head but otherwise they have straight hair. So it is completely fine and it is absolutely normal to have different types of hair types or shapes on the same head. Finally, I want to discuss a little about our scalp because our discussion on hair basics would be incomplete if we do not pay attention to our scalp. Our scalp resembles the skin of the rest of the body. It has a very rich blood supply network present which is responsible for carrying the nutrients to the hair follicle that is the live seed which gives rise to the hair. Therefore, it is very important to pay attention and give adequate attention to our scalp's needs because that will determine the health of our hair. Alrighty, this brings us to the end of this video on hair basics. I hope you found it useful. Now that you've understood the basics, it will make it easier for you to form well-informed decisions and understand the different conditions affecting the scalp and the hair. In the coming videos, we'll discuss what you can do and actually have control of to get healthy, gorgeous hair.
what are the mistakes that we might be committing on an everyday basis that is actually harming the health of our hair and scalp. We'll also discuss many conditions, everything to do with hair transplant and many other things. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure you have so that you don't miss any new videos that come out. Till then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Take care, see you soon.